In this session, we will learn about elements and setup requirements of tailstock. The tailstock supports the workpiece during turning and can hold tools for drilling and tapping. It's used mainly for machining shafts and hollow cylinders. Here is the component mounted in the spindle chuck for turning. The length of the component is 250 mm and the diameter of the component is 50 mm. If in this condition turning is done, component will deform. If the component L by D ratio is less than 3, chuck holding is sufficient. If the component L by D ratio is more than 3 and less than 6, chuck and tail stock holding is required. If the component L by D ratio is more than 6 and less than 9, then chuck, tail stock and steady rest are required. Now let's learn about the parts of the tail stock. Flat and dovetail guideways where the tail stock assembly is mounted. Tail stock base. The bottom part of the tail stock, which is the casting base, tail stock body. The tail stock body is mounted on the casting base and secured with four screws to the tail stock base. It houses the tail stock quill for clamping along with hydraulic cylinders and sensors. The tail stock quill is the extended part that holds the live or dead center for securing the component. The clamping plate secures the tail stock assembly to the machine guideways by tightening it, providing stability during machining. A quill moment pressure is limited to 12 bar. Proximity sensors detect the tail stock quill's home and forward positions. To support the component, First, loosen the tailstock body bolts and move the tailstock as close as possible with minimum overhang for better clamping and stability during cutting. After positioning the tailstock properly, tighten the body bolts to clamp it securely to the guideways. Ensure the base doesn't interfere with the turret or tool path. Operate the quill forward using the foot switch and close the door to start the automatic machining cycle. Subscribe for more CNC tutorial and share your results in the comments.